This is Professor Parker, and for today's lesson, we're going to talk about subtracting fractions. Now, this skill is kind of tricky, but it's very important, right? When we subtract or add fractions, we have to make sure that we have what are called common denominators. Common meaning the denominators have to be the same. Also, you need to know what a denominator is. The denominator is the bottom number in a fraction. The numerator is the top number in the fraction. So we have three-fifths minus one-half, right? So three-fifths, what does three-fifths really mean? Three-fifths means we took an object, could be a cake or something, and we cut it up into five slices. And then let's say we focus on three of those slices or three of those slices got eaten. That's what three-fifths represents. But then we want to subtract one-half from three-fifths. You can't really subtract one half from three fifths because your denominators aren't the same. It's almost like saying if I have five dollars, how do I take away six pesos from five dollars? It's not the same currency. A denominator is like currency. So you got to have the same currency in order to actually do subtraction or addition. We can multiply or divide without the same denominators, but we can't do addition or subtraction. So what we want to do is we want to find a common denominator. Now, how do you do it? One of the ways to do it is just to multiply the two denominators together. Five times two. That gives you ten. And also what this does is it gives us the least common denominator because 10 is the smallest number that five can multiply into and two can also multiply into, right? So, but this is the thing. If my denominator changes, my numerator has to change. I can't just write three tenths or one tenth because that wouldn't be equivalent because we want to change the numbers but keep the same value. We want to change the numbers but keep the same value. So if I did five times two to get 10, I got to also do three times two to get six because three-fifths is equivalent to six-tenths. And then over here, how did this two turn into a 10? I multiplied it by five. So if I did two times five, then on top, I got to do one times five. Gotta, I got to be consistent. So one times five gives me five. And then now I got common denominators. So I got, again, it's like dollars and dollars or pesos and pesos. I can't do, I can't subtract pesos from dollars, right? So now I got tenths and tenths. So I got six of them and I'm taking away five of them. So I'm left with one of them. So that is one-tenth, and that's today's lesson.